Welcome everyone to the second segment of lecture 14 where we're going to apply the design equations that we have derived for plaque flow reactor and CSTR. We're going to apply them in this example. Example 1, 1. Okay, example 1, 1. Consider the liquid phase cis trans isomerization of 2 butene. See, so the the double bond start on the second carbon, not the first carbon, but the second carbon. So it's two butene. You have a double bond there. Shown above, which can be written symbolically as A goes to B. So whenever you see a reaction like A goes to B, that must be then isomerization reaction because obviously it's not a combination reaction. It's not dissociation reaction. It must be isomerization reaction where the molar mass of a in this case equals the molar mass of B. Okay, and it's going from the cis configuration with the methyl groups are on the same side and it's transformed into a trans formation, which is which you find that these CH3 groups are on the opposite side. The first order reaction minus RA equals KCA. The first order reactions carried out isothermally in a tubular reactor in which the volumetric flow rate epsilon is kept constant. Starting from the design equation, derive an, an, an algebraic equation that relates V to CA0, CA epsilon and K. So let's do that. Let's start with the design equation. For a plug flow reactor, the design equation is written as follows dfa over dv equals ra correct and let's see dfa over dv instead of ra instead of ra we can write minus k c a correct and now i want the volume let's do cross multiplication and we'll have dv equals D F A over minus K C A. Okay, and let's integrate. And when we integrate above, we integrate both sides. You can't integrate one side. So you cannot write the equation this way. This is wrong. Okay, you have to integrate both sides. And, and volume equals to zero. Let's plot the tubular reactor at volume equals to zero which we are here this is the volume equals to zero of course if a equals if a not right okay so if a the independent variable if a equals oops let's use the correct color if a not and the integration will be carried out all the way until v here okay until v where f a equals f a an unknown value so until v and this guy is f a okay what's the integration of dv obviously it is v evaluated from 0 to v that is v minus 0 so that's v okay now we have something here interesting we have our variable c a here and then we have our independent variable here, F A. So I cannot really integrate, right? I cannot integrate. I either have to transform C A to F A or transform F A to C A. So let's do the other, the other way. Okay, so let's do the second thing, which is, let me write it down here. Okay, let me write it down there. So we have we have F A equals, you know what F A equals, right? What does it, oops, sorry, F A. Yeah, we have F A equals, in terms of concentration, C A times epsilon, correct? Therefore, D F A equals D C A times epsilon. And I know that epsilon is constant, right? So can write it as epsilon dCA. So I come here and I write 
integration of instead of dfa instead of dfa all right epsilon dca epsilon dca divided by divided by minus k c a and now instead of f a naught my independent variable is c a when i have f a equals f a naught c a equals c a naught and whenever i have f a at that location that means the value c a is c a okay great so let's see what's the okay epsilon and k are constant because epsilon says here we go it says it's kept constant and k which is function of temperature as you know as you know and the temperature is constant because you have isothermal operation okay yep there we go isothermal operation so they're constant you can take them outside that integration so v equals epsilon over minus k integration of dca over C A evaluated from C A naught to C A. Okay, can we integrate? Yes, we can because simply we have the derivative of a function divided by its function by the function. Okay, we stuck at the dala So the integration is ln, right? Epsilon over minus k. That's ln the function dala. Okay, and evaluate it from C A naught to C A, correct? And which can be written as epsilon equals minus K, okay, small letter K, that's ln C A over C A naught, ln C over C A naught. So now we have an equation for V, an algebraic equation for V as a function of all what is mentioned above. Okay, great okay this is the function now okay what what i did i removed the negative here and switch the len from len c a over c a naught to len c a naught over c a okay what else determine the reactor volume necessary to reduce c a to 10 percent of c a naught when the volumetric flow rate is 10 liter per minute and the specific rate constant is 0.23 per minute okay that's simple so what you're gonna do is direct substitution and v equals instead of epsilon not of course epsilon is constant so you know that epsilon equals epsilon not correct because it's constant okay so here we have 10 liter per minute and k is 0.2 three per minute one over a minute okay len c a naught over c a and it says to reduce c a to 10 percent of c a naught so what is the value of c a hmm. it's 10 percent of c a naught so that's simple 0.1 right times c a naught it's not 0.9 right it's simply 10 percent of c a naught so that means that means C A naught over C A simply equal 1 over 0.1 okay which is 1 over 1 over 10 which is simply 10 okay so we have here instead of writing C A naught over C A we write ln 10 and the answer would simply be around 100 liter when it cancels out a minute you have a liter there okay so that's the volume of a plug flow reactor required to have 90 percent conversion great for the same conditions and requirements of example one one which was for plug flow reactor calculate the volume of a CSTR okay and this is problem one six actually one of the suggested problems okay let's do that how do we do this well we first 
start with the design equation, correct? What is the design equation for a plaque flow reactor? Say it says V equals if A naught minus if A over minus R A. Okay, and if A naught can be written as epsilon naught times oops, epsilon naught times C A naught. And if A can be written as epsilon times C A over minus R A, we know minus R A equals K times C A. Of course, we just said that the volumetric flow rate is constant, so epsilon equals epsilon naught. So we can write here not as well. Let's take a common factor, epsilon naught, and we have C A naught minus C A. Correct, and there here we have K, and here we have CA, and we just wrote that CA equals 0.1 CA naught. Correct, so therefore CA naught minus CA, this is the CA I'm talking about here, okay, can be replaced with 0.1 CA naught, which gives you in fact 0.9 CA naught right so here we have epsilon which was 10 K which was 0.23 and this is multiplied by instead of writing CA naught minus CA here okay I'll just simply write 0.9 CA naught uh, <clears throat> divided by sorry uh yeah c naught minus c a so yeah i wrote it in terms of uh, uh that so here we have uh k times c a and instead of c a what is it instead of c a i can write 0.1 c a naught okay so again instead of c a here I wrote 0.1 CA naught and instead of CA naught minus CA this guy okay we write 0.9 CA naught and then we can cancel out CA naught with CA naught and the answer would be almost let's see let's practice what we have learned in triple one which is uh, you know order of magnitudes calculation okay so here instead of 10 well, 10 is a good number, so we keep it. Instead of 0.23, we consider it as a 0.25. And 0.25 is simply written as 25 multiplied by 100. Correct? That's 0.25. And then here, 9 divided by 0 0.9 divided by 0 0.1, we consider it as 9 divided by 1 or simply 10. Okay, and I know that this guy is... This guy is simply 4, right? 100 divided by, by uh, 25 is 4. And then 4 times 10 times 10, that's around 400. So the answer is around 400 liter. Okay, that was easy. So we need a CSTR that has a volume of 400 liters in order to achieve 90% conversion. Okay, which volume is larger? The plug flow reactor or the CSTR? Well, obviously, we said for the plug flow reactor, we needed 100 liter. For a CSTR, we need 400 liters. Although both are doing the same job. What is the same job? Achieving 90% conversion. So how come one reactor requires more volume than the other? Well, in order to answer the above, question compare the following let's compare the volume the concentration and the rate of reaction okay so let's start with plug flow reactor <clears throat> here we have a plug flow reactor okay and then we have a CSTR this is our CSTR flow and 
flow out, this is flow in, and this is flow out. Okay, so the volume. The volume for a plug flow reactor obviously was 100 liter. For CCR was 400 liter. Let's look at the concentration. Well, the concentration inside a plug flow reactor varies, right? So it starts at CA0, right? And gradually, gradually decreases to the value of CA at the exit. What's the value of CA at the exit? Well, it is 0.1 CA0, correct? Okay, so it ranges between CA0 down to 0.1 CA0. Okay, let's look at the CSTR. CSTR here, the concentration of CA0, and the concentration at the exit is 0.1, 0 0.1 CA0, right? Okay, if the concentration is here is 0.1 CA0, what does that mean about the concentration here? What does it tell you? Well, we said it's well mix, right? So the concentration at the exit, same as the concentration inside the CSTR. So here we have only one concentration, which is 0.1 CA0, right? 0.1 CA0. So the plug flow reactor is operating at the large entrance concentration and then the concentration gradually decreases to the smallest value of concentration which is 0.1 CA0. However, in comparison for the CSTR, the CSTR is operating at the lowest concentration in this case which is 0.1 CA0. Right? What does that mean about the rate? Well, you know that the rate is minus RA equals K CA. For plug flow reactor, the CA ranges from CA0 to 0.1 CA0. So that means the rate of reaction ranges from the large value of K times CA0 and gradually decreases to the value of 0.1 K CA0. Correct? So this plot could also be for minus RA where at the beginning the rate of reaction is K CA0 and then it decreases to KCA where you have the CA is 0.1 CA0. Okay, however, let's look at the CCR. The CCR, the concentration inside the CCR is 0.1 CA0. That means that the rate inside okay, the rate inside the CCR is K times CA, right? And we know that the value of CA is simply 0.1 CA0. So the rate inside the CCR is simply minus RA 0.1 K CA0. Okay, so that's 0.1 K CA0. Okay, let's see the rate. Let's compare the rates. Let's compare the rates. So the rate and the plug flow reactor starts high at the maximum value and then gradually decreases to the minimum value at the exit. However, in comparison, the CSTR is operating under the lowest rate of reaction. Correct? So, and you know that we said the lower the rate of reaction, right? The reaction is going slow. That means you need more time and more time inside the equipment is achieved by having larger equipment, correct? Larger equipment. So it's very obvious that the volume of CSTR is much larger than the volume of plug flow reactor because the CSTR is operating at the lowest concentration and therefore the lowest rate of reaction compared to plug flow reactor which is operating at the range of concentration ranges between the highest concentration and gradually down to the lowest concentration at the exit which means the rate of reaction starts high and gradually decreases to the lowest value so in general the plug flow reactor is operating at larger rates of reaction compared to a 
CSTR, which is operating at the minimum rate of reaction. And since the plug flow reactor is operating at the larger rate of reaction, it requires less volume, right? Less volume compared to CSTR, where it's operating at the lowest rate of reaction. So that explains why. In fact, this is also true for a heat exchanger. For example, if you have a heat exchanger where you have large rate of heat transfer, fast rate of heat transfer to achieve a given objective, reducing temperature from a temperature to another temperature, smaller temperature, you require small heat exchanger. But you have a heat exchanger which is fouled, which is dirty, and the heat is transferring at a very slow rate. To achieve the same objective, you will need larger area of a heat exchanger, larger heat exchanger to achieve the same objective. So remember, when it comes to design, it's all about rate. With this note, I'll leave you and we'll see you soon in the following lecture.